Hey everybody, welcome to another, I can't believe another week's gone by. It's really impossible to think about it. Um, but thanks for joining me. Um, I, I have a few things to talk about today, although <clears throat> Patrick is traveling, so he didn't send me anything, but I guess I can look it up myself. But before I started, I wanted to read a, an exchange I had with a customer on, um, it's an estimate, <clears throat> which it's interesting. Actually, I'm in the middle of it, so I thought it might be kind of neat to share this with you guys. So the customer has nine of these restoration hardware. I don't know if you guys are familiar with restoration hardware chairs. They're really neat looking chairs. Um, she's got bar stools, a combination of bar stools and, and dining chairs. And they have those recessed backs to them, which, which are very desired, which the French uh, made popular. So um, I thought you guys might be interested in um, lately the sales, <laughs> the sales has been tough and uh, there's a lot of people who are coming to me, uh, that are price conscious right now. Um, uh, it's really kind of interesting, but you have to be patient with people and maybe try to explain things in a different way. So here it is. So she's got these chairs. Um, she says the existing fabric is a brushed linen from restoration hardware. I'm hoping for something similar. I said, I said, these are nice. I kind of like them, actually. These are the kitchen, the dining chairs. So they're just, they have the same amount of upholstery as the bar stool, so they're all the same. So I quoted her out. You know, I share my prices with you guys. I, have, I don't have a problem with that. I said, these are very nice. Give a compliment. Um, they're 325, 325 each, assuming they're in good shape, which I do assume they are. I've done these restoration hardware chairs before. Um, and I said they're about two yards a piece on the fabric. I don't usually mention um, how much fabric is in that first uh, text back. Um, I kind of let them think about the labor costs. And then they usually ask about the fabric, which this customer did. Uh, we, I said we have a good supply of fabric like this. So it's a pretty common fabric. It's like the linen, linen type fabric and the colors grays, whites, and everything are in. So, um, so <laughs> this, this wasn't a good side. So automatically she adds everything up. Now notice that, now this isn't being deceitful. It's just, I'm giving her the price per chair first. And the reason I do that is because if I said to her, it's going to cost you $3,250, which actually she have nine or 10 of these. I thought she said she had nine. So she's a little bit over that. That's why I don't total it out because I, I, I think she made a mistake there. Oh, for all 10, she does have 10. So she added it up, certainly. So $32, $3,250. Sounds like a lot of money, guys. But, you know, these chairs are not easy to do. I've done them before. You guys know if you've done those recessed backs, how difficult it's very difficult to take them apart without damaging the wood on those. So there's there's some labor to these. There's about three and a half to four hours labor on each one. Eight, 16, 24, 32. So it's $320. That eighty dollars an hour. So th that's how it works. <clears throat> Anyhow, so let's let's go on to the exchange because it's very interesting. It's what's uh with inflation kicking in a little bit, uh, I'm getting a lot more of this, you know. Uh, tit for tat or whatever you want to call it, back and forth. Whereas before I would just quote the price and they either say yes or no. So she, I said, so, so she's saying, so that's 3250 for all 10 chairs plus whatever it costs to buy 20 yards of fabric. And she's asking how much that is. So now <clears throat> I have to be careful here because the average decorative fabric, because I want the sale, it's a good sale. I, I do. So there's a little salesmanship here. It's, it's a, uh, you know, don't be ashamed of that. You guys, if you're in business, you, you have to do sales. You have to be a salesperson sometimes, as well as an upholsterer, as well as a manager, as well as uh, uh, managing uh, not only your business, but, but people. And, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, I, so I, I start with this. I said, I have books at about $50 a yard. And then right off, she says, bummer. I thought it would be less expensive. The chairs are $480 on sale right now. So it would cost only $550 more to buy 10 new chairs each. She's talking each. 
<clears throat> thanks so much for the quote, meaning goodbye. But I wasn't going to give up. I don't usually do this, but, <laughs> you know, sometimes people need to be, be reminded about why it might be a good idea to, you know, reupholster rather than throw 10 chairs away and buy 10 new chairs. It seems like an awful waste to me. So I said, very direct, I said, well, recycling is a major reason a lot of people are upholstering. Am I? Uh-oh. I don't see the live chat today, you guys. So I don't know if I'm on. I know I'm on. I know you guys are listening to me, but I don't have the chat. I don't know what happened to the chat. Let's see if I can get it up. Maybe nobody's on there. Well, there's a problem here with with the live chat, you guys. So I'm just going to have to wing it without you guys today. And that's too bad because I rely on you guys sometimes for the comments. But I'll just go. I'm solo today, you guys, for sure. So I can't get this. I can't get this up. But that's okay. And I know eight people are on here at least. So I'll just keep going. So anyhow, so I, I can't respond to you guys. I don't have it. If Patrick was there, he'd be able to fix this. But I, I don't know how to fix this. If you guys want to text me comments, you can do that. Uh, you can text. You guys know my phone number, 978-460-5184. You can text me if you have any comments that you think are important enough. So recycling is a major reason a lot of people are upholstering and also helping local small businesses. So why not? That was like my last ditch effort to try to get this job because it is it is a good job and you know and I don't think this person is listening to me but um you know the house looks you know you can see the background and the house looks pretty you know pretty nice house and uh you know uh, I think that I don't think there's an affordability I think this person is just shopping which is nothing wrong with that but <clears throat> I'm just trying to save the job that's all so welcome again to the question and answer um I'm going to try one more time to fix this. I don't know how. Let's see. And, oops. I better not mess with this. Uh, I'm not going to mess with this. So you guys are just going to have to be bored with me. Um, uh, so I wanted to catch up as usual. I want to thank our subscribers on YouTube. And please, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the Broadway Upholstery on YouTube, where you'll find many, many videos, hours and hours. Um, I think we're close to 400 or something like that. I don't know. I, I've lost count videos. And uh, thanks for that. And the uh, Broadway Upholstery Forum on Facebook continues to uh, be of interest for people, and people um, are learning from others on that. So if, if you're watching this for the first time, don't forget to check that out. And don't forget to check out Upholstery on Broadway, where you'll find uh, the store that we have, um, and you'll find the online classes um, and a lot of other good things on there. So check that out. You'll be able to see some past projects that I've done too. And um, the, the website that Patrick designed, everybody seems to like that. So check that out. Um, so the other thing here is that I want to do is go to Facebook. And Denise um, posted something. She's got First, let me show you what she has here. I don't know if you can make that out, but it's an edge roll on top of a seat. And she's got a, a, a measuring stick there to show you that it's a two inch edge roll, but it's that styrofoam stuff that I don't like. My latest problem, she says, is the decking fabric is stapled underneath the two inch thick edge roll. Yeah, I've seen this before on newer furniture. Oftentimes when they do that, that's a manufacturer doing it just to make it easy to manufacture. They're not thinking about you upholstering it because it's, it definitely is a harder for you to, it's a problem for you as the upholsterer coming in, but manufacturing it was easier to do it that way. And then she says, which is stapled with construction size staples. Yeah. Um, it is, they use that stuff. Um, so I just got the text message. This is good. This customer text texted me saying she understands and she's going to ask her husband. So that's good. So a little guilt sometimes. <laughs> a little guilt in the sales, you know, sometimes pays off. We'll see. Um, she's, she goes on. Denise goes on to say, is it necessary to have the two-inch height or can I use a one-inch burlap edge roll? 
and cotton and apply decking the traditional way. Absolutely. You know, Denise is a good problem solver. I've seen other things that she's done and, and she, she's asking questions. Um, I think she can absolutely do that. Now keep in mind though, when you go down to a one inch, one inch edge roll, it's just going to take some seat height away. Uh, the whole idea of a two inch edge roll is it kind of sets you up for the seat height for the overall seat. So uh, unless she adds a little bit more padding, um, she can do that too. She'd be creative. As long as you're creative with batting, uh, just don't use light batting in the beginning. Like don't use Daycron in the beginning layers of batting because uh, you guys know Daycron does not have the substance. Daycron is surface underneath fabric pretty much. Um, and, you know, loose Daycron in cushions, which I don't like. But if you're going to use Daycron on cushions, uh, use the really the the fiber stuff, the really really thinned out stuff, not the stuff that we use uh, to cover cushions and things like that. They don't do well on throw pillows. Um, we get a lot. You know what I'm hearing a lot, you guys. Lately, I've been affected greatly this year by allergies. Um, never before. Um, I have one ear is completely blocked, and this ear is partially blocked. I never realized. I know, I know air, airs have a lot to do with your balance, but uh, this has been going on about a month and um, I'm taking, I'm, I'm just starting to try to take care of it, but it's really a distracted, it's distracting. And a lot of people in my age group are complaining about allergies. So I'm wondering what's going on there. It seems like a lot more people, maybe it's the season, I don't know. Um, but it is upholstery related. Uh, we had a uh, needlepoint come in a grandmother's needle point come in the other day and um, we took it apart and it was full of cat dander and it was terrible. Even I was affected by it. And I'm not usually. So, so something is uh, a little bit rough as far as allergy goes this season. Um, uh, <laughs> I told you about my adventure with a 1740 wing chair. I had uh, moths coming out, uh, so I, um, I'm in the process of taking care of that. That's going to take a little bit of extra care. What I did as soon as that happened is I wrapped it, I taped it, I got it out of the shop, and uh, took it to an open-air uh, place that's protected. I mean, it's open-air garage, um, and I will uh, take that outside, strip that down, and have, have plenty of uh, ground coverage and then bag everything up and throw it away, and then treat it. So I've been having a lot of this goofy stuff going on lately, you guys. So I said to Denise, uh, definitely, Denise, uh, you, you have a good idea there. Go, go for it. Your instincts are usually pretty good. Somebody answered. Who was it? Let's see. Jay actually answered her. She says, when it's your front, he says, when it's your furniture, you totally get to do what, what pleases you. There you go. I like that answer. So there's another comment in here from Jay. Um, this is interesting, you guys. There is a thing on YouTube where people watch a video and share the reactions to a video. Pretty often it's music, but this subject is upholstery. I was watching videos about Tatama, Tatama, Tatami mats and thinking it would be cool to hear Kevin's reaction to the materials, the tools, the stitching. Anyway, it's a form of upholstery and after learning about it, I understand why taking off your shoes as you enter a house is a thing in Japan, at least. It's much like someone walking across your upholstery of shoes on. That's interesting. So I'll show you a picture of this gentleman. I've never heard of it before. Upholstering that mat. I guess um, this is used over floors, uh, but I'm not sure. It looks like it's off the ground, but let's check it out. Let's go to the YouTube connection here. I'm not sure if I can look at the whole thing, but. The symbol of Japanese culture, ah. tatami mats. So let's just. Not only really. Freeze it. So they are ground level. So look at that, you guys. It almost looks like trampolines, I would say. And I could see, you guys could see how beneficial that would be, right? For your, um, gravity tends to really destroy us over time, doesn't it, you guys? I mean, your knees, your joints, um, 
gravity really, especially when you get older, that you could see how, boy, I, I, I'm, I'm really glad Jay sent me this because um, we used to, I used to have a shop, I used to belong to a shop where um, we had we had the opportunity to design the floor of the place. So what we did was we put a subfloor on and we put plywood, we put ply. it was a cement floor. So we put down, I think there were two by two by fours and then plywood. It, it wasn't quite as elaborate as what we see here, but it was over the cement floor a couple of inches. And, and it, where we were working, we made sure that we were in the, uh, where the two by fours weren't. So it gave us a little bit of a trampoline effect, which you'd be surprised over an eight hour time, how that, um, how that affects in a positive way. So, so I, I, I think this is great. I, I hope I have more time later to look at this, but it, I don't see the tools that they were using, but it's fairly interesting. Thanks Jay for sending that. And I think we caught up on the Facebook. So I'm gonna go to the YouTube and I'm gonna run something. So let's just, so she responded after I said about recycling and about supporting local businesses. She says, I understand. I'll ask my husband to see what he thinks. There you go. So we'll see. Um, so in other words, instead of just leaving it like uh, with her comment about just, just looking at the money end of it, I, I follow up with my comment about recycling and supporting local businesses, I might get the job. And, you know, I might even, they might come back and say, you know, uh, I don't like to do this, but... Uh, it is a, it is a rather of a large job. Maybe I'll offer a little bit off of the labor, or maybe I'll offer free pickup and delivery, something like that, which which has a lot of value around around the uh, Boston area. So I will try to uh, get this job if I can. You know, why well, lose it? Um, so let's go to the YouTube's. So if I feel or sound a little flat today, it's because of the it's because of the blockage in my ear. I'm not myself. So hello everybody. I know I'm so sorry if you're just joining me. I don't know why the comment section isn't working on here. If if you guys, somebody out there knows how to fix the comment. I know Patrick's traveling, so he can't help me. But if somebody out there who knows a live YouTube, if they if they know how to uh, click this on, that would be really appreciative. And I have no idea why it's not working. I, I know you guys can see me. Uh, excuse me. Now let's go to the YouTube. And then I have some, I, I had this set up where I was going to ask you guys your input your questions. I've touched upon this before a little bit about a blog that Patrick was, Patrick's been talking about this blog. He even bought these microphones a long time ago. They're really, really good microphones for Jimmy and I to do a blog. And I kind of hesitated thinking, you know what? I'll just get into this now a little bit before I do the YouTube. And uh, I wish I had my comments up here, but I don't. Maybe you guys could comment later. Um, but I, or maybe next week. But I, I, I was always, always hesitant because I was thinking to myself, well, how much... How much can you talk about? How much upholstery can you talk about on a blog? And I think Daphne, you you said it's such a visual thing, and and I agreed with that. Upholstery is a visual thing. How much can we talk about it? But then uh, I think Patrick is thinking on these lines. I had somebody come in the shop that knew um, the car talk guys, click and clack. And if you guys remember, they were on NPR or WBUR a long time ago. I think they had like 600 channels across the United States. They won a Peabody Award at one point. So um, the person reminded me, though, who knew them, he, he reminded me that it wasn't all about cars. So that got me thinking, you know, Jimmy Jimmy, Jimmy uh, has some good banter. And Jimmy works for, um, he's got an interesting job, so we might be able to combine that if, if he wanted. Well, we just stick to upholstery, but the subjects, you know, you know how Jimmy and I get off subject a lot. Um, we all try to reel it back into upholstery. It would be, it would be like that when he's here. You know, we've been taking a little bit of hiatus because Patrick's coming back and then we're going to regroup and see where we're going to go. Uh, we, we have to start doing new videos. We do have, I do. Oh, speaking of videos, I'll get back to this. I'll get back to this later after the YouTube and after I talk. 
uh, the settee class just went up with Jimmy. If you guys don't know what that is, check out the Upholstery on Broadway website to see the um, online classes and check out and, up, uh, and on Facebook, it's advertised. Uh, you see Jimmy there, the last class went up. And when Patrick gets back, he's gonna be posting another class. And this is a long awaited class, it's a channel back. So we're kind of excited about that. And it's not as long, it's a quick class because this particular channel back had an upholstered seat. So the upholstered seat eliminated a cushion, which would have been at least another two classes. Um, and the, so there wasn't as much, um, so the whole focus, in other words, is the channel. And Jimmy had a fun time putting that channel on. So that that check that out, you guys. Um, you guys who have subscriptions, if you guys are just joining us and don't know what that is, you can subscribe uh, subscribe or have or get a yearly subscription to the classes, and you get access to all the classes, including the new ones that come out, which this channel back is. So you guys should check that out. So let's get to the YouTube. I'm going to have to get in here in a different way. I'm going to have to go to my email. And I'm going to have to put in. YouTube search. YouTube. So the first one is from Tim. This is funny, you guys. <laughs> Tim says, um, I just, and this is about the upholstery show last week. You must have been watching it. I just did a Google street view to see your shop. And as I panned around, there is a guy on the street. Is that you? <laughs> I don't know. Because I tried to get on Google. You know, you guys know me. I'm not very technical. I don't have much of a, I have this cell phone, but that's about it. But um, Patrick does all the IT. I tried to do that, but I couldn't get a street view. So I'm not sure if that's me or not. But I, but any advertisement is good, Tim. So if it is me, I should have been waving or maybe had a sandwich sign on or something, huh? But thanks for drawing that to my attention. And the next one is, so this is about stuffing a cushion cheaply and effectively. So some of the, some of the videos we do are, are, are trying to help, you know, the average homeowner with problems that might come up in upholstery. And this was one of them, an easier way uh, to show people how to stuff a cushion or to add to a cushion, whatever. But Jared said a question. I, I looked up, I'm looking to redo my rear cushions or back cushions on my couch. And I unzipped them and found a manufacturer's tag that told me it, it had fiber in it. I was just talking about that fiber. That fiber that I'm talking about is Dacron, but it's a very fine, very fine, uh, which translates into no body. It's fine in the beginning. It's very fine fiber, but it has no body. So what what is a fine fiber that has body? K-Pak. K-Pak really has that. We used to use that in backs a lot. It has it has that really silky feel and and real. It it it, it holds up. Although it does mat down, uh, down is better though. I'm not looking uh, to completely replace all the stuffing and it just fill in the difference. Is there a specific type of polyfill? He's asking about the polyfill I should be looking for. Also, how much should I need? I can see you buy the materials by the pound and I'm doing two cushions roughly 36 by 18. I'm not sure what a one pound bag fill is, 10 pound bag. Any help would be greatly appreciated. I think you could just start with a 10 pound, wait, wait a minute, uh, five pounds each, a five pound bag, see how that does it. Just try small first, don't buy anything big to it small. But I have also have another recommendation here. You can actually do this with throw pillows with that fiber, throw pillows inserts, you know what I mean, you guys? It has a nice fine muslin uh, liner and it has that fine, um, material inside and a lot of times you can fold those over and just if you have zippers which he does it sounds like he has zippers you could just put those push the filling this up there take your cushion take the cushion from the bottom and push it um, hold up both ends of the cushion like this and push it or use gravity to kind of force the filling up to the top then open the zipper 
and then you put two throw pillows in there and you're done. Or you could do what he's doing. It's a lot messier to get that loose fiber in there. And the problem with that is I show people how to do that, certainly. Um, it's trying to keep those fibers away from the, the zipper because when you're closing up the zipper, they, they tend to get in the way of the teeth of the zipper. And then you get another problem. So that sometimes those pillows are an easier solution. Um, not as they don't uh, transfer, uh, transition. We, we use that word a lot with Jimmy. If you guys have watched me talk to Jimmy about transition lines and upholstery and things like that, the transition between the new material and the old material isn't as clean with a throw pillow, but, but it, it's dependent on the fabric too. If you have a white cotton cloth fabric, it's going to show the ridging a little bit more on that and you might have to go to the light polyfill so, so it's funny how a lot of other things factor into this but most upholstery fabrics would take a throw pillow a couple of throw pillows on the bottom maybe even folded and that it solves your problem it's cheap those those things you can go into bed and bath i think those inserts are like uh 12 maybe a piece something like that um and we have another comment on stuffing a cushion this is from a guy who does comics, so I better I better read it first, maybe. Patrick Patrick does the screening when I'm here. I could, I could probably read a whole paragraph before I realize that maybe it might be inappropriate. So, <laughs> and you know, this is dangerous because there are no comments. Usually, Daphne or somebody is helping me out here with some of this new stuff that that I don't know about. I'm an older parent, you know, being in my sixties. And Patrick, we hit Patrick a little late, so I think the gap between the technology was a little bit more crucial for us. But I think you younger parents are a little bit more in tune with what's going on with your kids when it comes to this stuff, right? But anyhow, um, I read a little bit about it. I think this is clean. Uh, this is from Ajian Comics. Hello there. Do you have any videos talking about properly covering sofa structure with foam? I mean, the layers, density, sizes, Daquan, cover, springs, etc. I'm doing a couch from scratch and only have pictures collected on web as a reference. So this is getting into something that I haven't had time to do, really. And I could tell him that I, that I don't. Uh, this would be really modern upholstery, what he's asking. Um, he can get a good idea of how to do this by watching some of my videos because some of we, we do use foam in some of our videos where we're applying it. But what he's what he's doing is that he's got a frame, a sofa frame, guys, and he's starting literally from scratch, like like he says, really. And um, this is a little different, you know. We we, we focus a lot on, on real. I mean. <laughs> Reupholstery, reupholstery of, of existing furniture, um, and some of that, some of that requires restoration on some parts of it. Now, Jimmy said T class. Actually, what am I talking about? Um, that would be Jimmy. Jimmy said T class would be an example. The first time we actually featured something from from scratch, as he says. So I would say to Ajian, go go to the upholstery on Broadway and check out Jimmy's online class with the settee. That takes you right from the bottom up, and, and, and you should check that out. <clears throat> but uh, I will say another comment about this. So you know, we have all these videos. Um, the focus mainly is on reupholstery, not, restore, not restoration. Some of it is restoration, which means from the frame up. But but the Jimmy Settee, I think, is one of the only examples of really, literally, from the from scratch. Uh, we haven't got into this. I mean, I know how to do it, um, and we could spend a lot of time doing this. Um, we could have uh, videos, probably doubling up our library, just on this and. We may have to do this because for, uh, I hear from like like uh, Randy out in the Midwest. He he makes comments uh, how uh, he gets a little jealous about all the antiques that we get to do out here along the coast. You know, and it's so normal for me uh, to be doing antiques that I don't think about it that much. 
but I think Randy is doing more work like what this guy's asking for. So we may be, we're not going to get the energy for this, but we may be um, in the future with, with our um, videos, we may have to get into more of this. We're going to have to get it more into building up, you know, it's our own unique style too, I might say. We add some of the traditional, we keep some of the traditional methods to apply them to modern uh, upholstery. Um, and we may have to start doing this um, because, you know, not everybody gets to do antiques all the time like we do. So um, I might have to do that. I might have to consider that. Thank you for that comment. And we still don't have the comments up. If you guys are just checking in, I, I don't have the comment section up here. It's the first time this has happened. Um, sorry about that. As I do rely, I like to look at and banter back and forth with uh, regulars. So this is new. I mean, this is totally solo right now. Um, I wish I asked Jimmy to come today. Uh, the next one is how to cut fabric around posts. Uh, Sarah says, thank you. So helpful, clearly explained. Wish I had seen this before I made the wrong cut. It's, it's so easy to make the wrong cut. Let me just put this video up here. What happened? Hey, guys. Welcome to... Well, this is the video uh, thumbnail that Patrick has. He has a thumbnail up there. And then the name of that video is How to Cut Fabric Around Posts. So the reason that's hard is I had one of my students who, who commented about, about this. He said it's counterintuitive. Cutting is counterintuitive for him. He was an engineer. And the reason is your, your, your fabric is pulled on tight. And then you fold the fabric all over backwards, and then you have to cut. You have to think spatially at that point. <clears throat> and, and the way you have to think is, <coughs> excuse me, what you want the fabric to do after it's been cut. I think I say this in this. Visualize, if you're making a, a corner cut, for instance, uh, not all cuts, but a, most, a lot of cuts, after you cut the fabric, the points meet out in behind the chair, out in space. <laughs> um, they should meet. In other, they should meet evenly. So, <clears throat> in other words, if one is, if you have a lot of fabric on one side and not enough fabric on the other side, you haven't read the cut well. Now, if it if it's a cut that goes inside the chair, it's not as important as if it's a surface cut near the front of the chair. Um, so that's why I say to people, the back cuts are good practice because if you make a mistake on those, you can, you can recover somewhat, but, um, people can really, you can really make mistakes on these because of that. So I don't know if that's a good explanation. I think for some people, it was a good, good explanation. Um, there's nothing like having a video and replaying it over and over again. You know, when I was learning, I didn't have that benefit. I, I, I didn't work during the day and then go home and go online and see what the, the upholsterer was doing through somebody else, you know, hopefully you find a video. But there were no videos. Um, this is really, you know, we take this for granted how there is a certain, it's miraculous that we have these videos that we can learn from. I mean, you guys realize that some of the things that you see me do, like the historic and the, and the upholstery, they've been passed down, usually father to son. In my case, not my case, but men, mentor to mentee. But they, these are like real old traditions that that up until YouTube, really. I mean, there were some eight-track tapes available out there, but they were awful. The camera angles and everything. Patrick does a good job with the camera angles, but. Um, this is just revolutionary, really. You guys can learn upholstery. And it's always amazed me that people, if you guys are tuning in for the first time, if you're a YouTuber and you've, you've done upholstery through my videos, um, that's the highest form of praise that I can, I can have because it was never intended to be quite like that. But I know people can do it. The online classes, the additional online classes, and the, and the forum, I think, really kind of fine-tune your skills. So to check that out if you haven't. But for all those who have who have started to, you know, hear from people that say they supplement their, their income by doing, you know, upholstery, 
Uh, that's wonderful. What a compliment that is, you know. I appreciate that. So the, we, we talked about the cuts. Let's go back here. Oh, and then this uh, Nancy, um, <laughs> Nancy's commenting on rubberized horse hair. Patrick and I did these before he went on his little trip. We were doing these little uh, videos on materials. They actually got a really kind of a nice response. Uh, but Nancy says, um, this seems so stiff. I, I have to check it out. Thank you. The rubberized horse hair is not only stiff, but it's coarse. And, you know, you can't, you, you rub your hand, you might even, <laughs> if you if you don't have calluses, you might get a little cut by rubbing your hand. But it's it's by design. It's it's used to, the top is used to look like horse hair. And the bottom is kind of that matte. It almost looks like um, a furnace, you know, your hot air furnace filter. It looks like a little bit like that, only it's much coarser than that. And the reason it has to be like that, its primary use is to go over coil springs, period. Um, and it's better than real horse hair for that purpose. So what I've been, I've been doing, and I hear my students are doing it, is you take the half inch. We just sold 20 yards of it, by the way. We sent that out. Um, take the half inch, uh, go over your coil springs with it, make sure you get burlap underneath it. And and then put your if you have horse hair, then put, put your horse hair on. But it, it makes for a great base. It stabilizes very well the coil springs, right? I mean, you have tie, you have knots uh, around the top of the springs. You might have a little tilt here and there, which is normal. It, it really kind of uh, smooths it all out, um, and and um, it really stitches up well. So you know, sometimes you have to stitch the front edge. Um, and you could put a nice blanket stitch. You see Jimmy doing that. You guys should check that video out. Because uh, Jimmy's always asking the right questions, like um, how far in uh, off the edge do you do you put the stitching? And great question. I mean, if you put it too close to the edge, you're going to rip it. Um, okay, and then if you rip it, is that no good? No, no. you can just keep <laughs> – it doesn't, it doesn't really matter because it's the bottom layer, you know. You could just take your stitch work in, and you get used to that. You, you, or you, those little mistakes that you make, by the way, are your, are your own best teacher, right? We learn from our mistakes in upholstery. The, the idea is, don't make your mistake on the on the final cut on a beautiful, you know, silk velvet that's four hundred dollars a yard. Uh, try not to do that. Make all your mistakes in the first layers of the chair. I, and the way I used to teach, um, I'm not sure if it if it if I show this even on the online classes, but it would be you know with the burlap. Burlap is one of the first materials you put on over the springs, right? I used to just let people kind of give them a little bit of a uh, you know clear. I, I, I'm not on top of them. I'm not. I, I leave them with a piece of chalk. I show them how to pin tack the, the burlap, but not right against the post. Give them a piece of chalk. And I say, I want you to think about, think about how you're going to cut it. Then, then they'll say, well, you, you know, tell me. I said, no, I want you to think about how to, how you would do it. I want you to chalk it. And I'll come over and if you think it looks right, go ahead and cut it. But I'll come back and look at where you've got it chalked. And then and they'll almost always, the chalk lines are off, but then I'll, I'll tell them why it's better to do it, what, what I want to do it. I usually tell them about that rule about, you know, letting the, letting the fabric or burlap meet in a perfect um, way out in, out in the space behind the chair or something like that. Um, and then I, I, I kind of give them um, their space to explore and, and I, I reassure them if they make a mistake after that, don't worry about it. Burlap, it doesn't matter. It's it's a great practice. So so then when they're ready for their fabric, they they've already experienced, especially this is for beginners mainly. They've already experienced cutting. They're not as nervous. They do need more help for sure. So the way I do it, you know, when you have 12 people, especially, I wished. You know, Patrick tried to film a, a big class of mine once. We had we had everything everything was perfect about the place. It had 
It was a big area, so everybody had at least three feet. Can you imagine? This was a huge area. Three feet around them. The lighting was spectacular. It had windows on both sides. Um, we still needed the compressor, which caused a little bit of a problem um, because usually uh, the compressor has to be somewhere else. But the filming was a nightmare. Patrick, he couldn't do it because I'm, I'm really quick when I, when I do these classes. You have to be really fast. You know, it, it's like I wondered if, if instead of filming, he just should have just recorded it. Because it was, you know, it's really fast. He couldn't keep up. The camera angles were awful. So, we, I would love to be able to somehow. I don't know if you guys, are, you guys out there, you can comment next week, how familiar you are with filming, and and then audio and all that. Audio was a problem too. I mean, he couldn't keep up with the with the audio. Um, I don't know how to equate this. You know, when when people, when, I guess when they do television shows, they they have a studio and they have that the people are in front of the camera and they and they're pretty. If you've noticed, people don't move around a lot. Now, this was tough for Patrick, and he had the he had that big camera on his shoulder, and it 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 didn't really work that well. I wish it did because it would be very interesting. Because what you would get, uh, for you as you guys who are learning. Uh, it, it would be like it would be like uh, a YouTube uh, show on steroids. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? You got twelve people. They have. I had one woman. She had a, a screen. Uh, she did a, a, a cotton cloth with a Marilyn Monroe portrait on the inside back, and she's there. I got another guy doing an East Lake chair. I got another lady over here doing this. You know, mid-century. All, Everything was so different, and and the personalities were, were fun too. So it was a really fun class, uh, but just impossible for Patrick to film it. It was his nightmare, I think. So if you guys have any idea about that, let us know. I mean, I do miss my classes since the pandemic. We haven't um, they we we cut them out, and we haven't been able to start them up again. So that's too bad. I wish you guys had the comments up here. Sorry about that that we don't have it. But let's go back to some more questions. Um, that was the rubberized horse here. Tape for tax. I like this title. You guys are so creative. <laughs> Much more than I am. Uh, Nancy says on the tack tape video, uh, well, <laughs> this is Patrick actually. So Patrick titled the tack tape, which is it's just a piece of cardboard. Patrick could make make things exciting on a piece of cardboard. Uh, maybe that's what he does for me. He says, my dad's really boring, but I'm going to have to make him exciting, right? But we'll do these videos. And uh, he titles this, Tape for Tax. Yes, question mark. Tape for Tax, question mark. Yes, cardboard tagging tape, exclamation point. <laughs> I'll just show you. That. I don't know if you guys can see that. <laughs> Anyhow, Nancy says, that was great. I have been upholstering for over 25 years, but I'm still learning as I only do a few pieces a year. I will be using those tricks you shared. I want to watch all of your videos, but can only do a little at a time. Your programs are great. Thank you. Oh, Nancy, it's, quite, it's comments like this that keep me going. Trust me. You know, we get a lot of support from our um, people who comment regularly on this show. And we also get a lot of support from the YouTube, um, but the and the Facebook. The, the Facebook is different. It's just kind of has a life of its own. It just you you plugged it in and let it and it just goes. And um, that's what I like about that. It's no maintenance, very little maintenance for us. But these these comments really do help. And we always have. You know, I don't know if you guys realize how hard it is to run a YouTube channel, but every time Patrick posts a YouTube or an online class, we get challenged by, because he likes to use music, but he always makes sure the music that he uses is music that's available, but it doesn't stop um, people making claims on you. I, I, I don't know if it's automatic, I'm not sure, but they make claims and then he has to handle that. And so he's in charge of handling the claims that come in against you know that could be a nightmare if you've worked so hard and, and a claim proves out to be uh, a legitimate crime i mean we want to honor all artists right 
because we are artists, right? As upholsterers. Um, so if, if something was used, um, even by accident, you know, you might have to change it. You might have to go back. I don't think he's had to do that yet. I, I think he's just, um, but he, he takes care. That's what he takes care of. And then <laughs> Patrick's funny. So uh, we did a thing on webbing. And so Patrick's title for that is Caught in the Web of Upholstery, Webbing 101. That's the, that's the thumbnail. And thanks, you guys. I see that you guys are still sticking in there with me, even though we're not commenting today. But, but thank you. So, uh, so one day at a time. Uh, those vid videos are so great answering all the little questions I have. Thank you. So it is the little questions, isn't it, you guys? When I was, when I was being taught, um, I worked in a shop where men, mentors, my mentors, grown men, were trying to make a living to support their families. So they weren't always eager to spend time with, you know, a young guy wanting to learn. Um, and asking questions, you, you were kind of limited to how many questions you could ask. And and then I, I'll never forget one time uh, I asked one question and then I asked another question and the upholsterer turned to me and said, you figure it out. And I actually had to figure it out, but and it took a while. But uh, it, he wasn't being mean. He was being, you know, I think he was just trying to send a message that, you know, you, your one question limit was up. So um, this is an interesting observation because that's what Randy pointed out. Randy, thank you. And I know Randy's probably listening. I know probably Randy, Daphna, um, Wes, uh, maybe Blair, uh, and a few other people, our regulars are on there now. I apologize that we don't have the comments. But R Randy pointed out with Jimmy, with Jimmy's kind of like the key to you guys learning more because he's asking those little questions. And, you know, uh, when, when you, when you get so good at something or so, you've been doing something for so long, you become so mechanical and you get, you start copping. I never, this never happened to me, but you start copping a little bit of an attitude without realizing it or assuming that everybody um, should understand what you, what you know, instantaneously, that's not the sign of a good teacher. A good teacher just get, is patience. Patience is really important. So with Jimmy's questions, I've been asked them over and over again in other classes, but um, they're very to the point. Um, some of them are, you know, th there's never a stupid question, never. And I, I tell him that before the cameras roll, remember that. It is his job to be asking those questions. And even if he, I noticed that Jimmy started getting really good at asking questions that he already knew the answer to but knew that somebody else might need to know. So he would ask it anyhow. So that's what makes him good. So that's why that class is very popular. But um, I think it's a great learning learning uh, technique. Um, and perhaps other people should look at that when they're teaching uh, on YouTube. Because I could tell you that the U this is why I was always amazed at the YouTube and how people are learning from it. It's because I know that when I'm, when I'm doing a project by myself, I'm not expressing... I'm not expressing those small little questions that Jimmy has. And of course they take time to, to film. They take time to edit. They take time to uh, uh, advertise, you name it, the whole line. Uh, but in the end, I think you have a much better product. I think they're worth, I think they have value. I really do. I think the value is good. Definitely. So let's see what else we got here. Um, so is the other one, Patrick, uh, the comfort of Dacron uses and tips. Uh, so uh, BVLV just says awesome. So how can Patrick makes, make a, a piece of white batting exciting? Well, he puts it, he puts an explosion around it. And, he, and he's, very, he's very creative with these titles. I like that. But Dacron has its place, right? So if you notice from the videos and from these, you know, materials that we're featuring, we have both uh, pre-World War II and post-World War II materials that we're featuring. And um, 
you know, usually with the machine age that comes about are the newer materials. And before that, um, before the Industrial Revolution, I would say, or before, we, we, we categorize it World War II. We, World War II is the, uh, as, the, as the date in the 40s. Um, we use a combination of those materials. Um, we're not exclusively using the, uh, the cottons and the horse hairs, um, and we're not exclusively using the, the, the post-World War II modern materials like Dacron and foam and things like that. It's okay to mix, but be careful when you mix. You can't, for instance, where you can get in trouble mixing mixing the two materials. You can put, somebody was just asking me the other day, uh, a student, she wanted, she's doing a, um, an antique sofa with, with um, a horsehair seat, and she's got, she's, she said she wanted to put the muslin and then put Dacron over that. I said, no, you need to put cotton. And, and um, she didn't think that those little hairs could come through the, mus the muslin and also the Dacron. But the Dacron is, if you hold Dacron up to the light, it's so porous. Um, it easily works its way through. And it would work its way through the fabric too. So um, she has put cotton on cotton. Cotton definitely contains those little hairs that might, might pop up. We're talking about sprung seats, by the way, too. I mean... You know, if you have a, a one layer of an arm seat with, with muslin and it's pretty solid, you might not have to worry about this as much. So, so that you also have to be thinking in those terms. You know, this is really, it can get really interesting. It's like, it's like cooking, you know, uh, the right ingredient for the, for, you know, the right ingredients have to be used to make it come out edible. So let's go to the next one. I think we're done. I think we're done with the YouTube. So I just wanted to touch. So this is probably for next week. If you guys um, check me out next week, I just wanted to run this by you guys. So the the the, the car talk blog featured two brothers, uh, and they they had this very successful program. Not looking so much for success. That's not that's not the idea. Um, I think the idea is to um, increase. Well, success with the with the YouTube channel, definitely. To this would maybe to increase the YouTube channel to add videos that would that would equate it to success. Um, not so much the success of Car Talk. I would never even dream of that type of success. But um, it, I think it's it could add a dimension to the the YouTube channel. I not the online classes, uh, but just the YouTube channel. So it would feature you know Jimmy and I. Um, like we do sometimes on the question and answers. And I think Patrick might design it where there's a desk and the two microphones. He might he might have that view. And I, I think the pretense would be upholstery furniture, delivering for, we, we get into this sometimes with uh, everything that comes about, like delivering furniture, you know, the mistakes that might be made, the, the, you know, all that stuff. And then we get off subject sometimes. And then we reel back to the upholstery now. There wouldn't be, I don't think there'd be too many visuals with this, if any. I think it's mostly going to be just Jimmy and I bantering back. Um, so I'm wondering about that, what you guys think about that. I know Daphne already weighed in on this, and she had a good point. She said if it's just upholstery, you know, there's no, people want to see visuals. But they're not seeing much visual hair except the board back there. <laughs> Um, so I'm trying to, so what I guess what I do when I'm by myself or what the show's been about is uh, we do th show the visuals with the camera, but I guess I'm trying to verbalize the visuals too, talk about the visuals. It would probably be much better. See, when Patrick is here, he, he does more of the visual stuff for sure. And I think it's more entertaining. I think that's what you're looking for. I think when Patrick is back, that that will start again. But he 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 like for instance he had an introduction to the show which was kind of which was kind of nice, and um, so he'll he'll get back to doing that. But that was the format. We have a certain format, but this would be something new. So um, we could even call it upholstery talk or something like that. So I'm wondering if you guys want to weigh in on that. Um, that would be great just to see. Um, that, so in other words, it might be more entertainment value uh, of a different sort because I think that. That was what was sparked in with this gentleman that I met recently with Car Talk was that it wasn't all about 
it wasn't all about uh, you know how to fix your car or, or cars. Um, they, they oftentimes got off subject, like like Jimmy and I do. Um, so uh, two MIT graduates, uh, Jimmy and I uh, are not. Uh, I didn't go beyond uh, maybe a year and a half of uh, liberal arts. So so we're more, I would say, street level. I would say. Which, which might be interesting and entertaining in itself. Our experiences might be a little different. So see what you guys think. Uh, give me some feedback on that. And um, I think I'm done. Uh, I have nothing else for you guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. And I have nothing at this shop. You can see the shop is empty here in Maine, but in Arlington, I'm packed. I need to start taking some stuff back here, and uh, start doing a little work here. So... Thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for bearing with me with this. Uh, I feel like I'm in the bunker right now because we, we, we <laughs> I do have some water at least, Perrier water at that. So thanks, thanks you guys uh, for tuning in. I want to know what you guys thought about this question and answer, and I'll, I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.